The uni dilemma is one of the cornerstones of category theory. It's a really important result. Don't let the fact that it's a lemma hide that. In this video, I hope to sort of informally motivate it because I think the philosophy of the uni dilemma is its true greatness. Let's say we have some mystery object in some category. Say it's some topological space. How might we study it? How about we play a game first? I have a deck of cards. You're going to close your eyes while I pick a card. Okay, now you need to guess what card I picked. You only get one guess, but you can ask me as many questions about my card as you want, as long as it's not a guess. Well, okay, you could ask me, is it a spade? No, it's not a spade. Well, is it a heart? No, not a heart. Okay, is it a club? No, it's not a club either. Okay, so it must be a diamond. Well, what about its value? Is it greater than 2? Uh, yes, it is. Is it greater than 10? It is. Okay, um, is it less than a king? Sure. By asking me these questions, um, you could pretty easily determine what card I have. The point is, the card I chose, indeed any card, is completely determined by its relationship to other cards. Likewise, the Yonita perspective in category theory is the following. An object in a category is completely determined by its relationship to other objects in that category. Let's return to our example. I picked a mystery topological space. How can you determine? Well, it lives in a category of topological spaces, so you could consider its relationship to other topological spaces. Relationships in a category are called morphisms, and specifically in the category of topological spaces, they are continuous functions between the objects, which are topological spaces. So, for instance, try mapping the unit interval continuously onto my mystery object. Now try it with a circle. Try mapping a circle onto my mystery object. In this way, we can get a pretty good idea of what this mystery object is. The, uni the Yonita lemma tells us that my mystery space X is not just... Um, we don't just get a pretty good idea of what it is by looking at its relationship to other objects. We can entirely determine it by its relationship to other topological spaces. But in what, what sense do we mean that? X and hom X, the um, functor, are certainly not isomorphic, as they may not even lie in the same category. Indeed, in our previous example, X was a topological space, and its hom set, um, you know, the set of all morphisms, into it, was just that, a set in the category of sets. But what we can say is that they carry the same information in the following sense. X is isomorphic to another space Y if and only if hom X is isomorphic as a functor to hom Y. This is one corollary of the Unit lemma. We'd also like this isomorphism to respect the morphisms about X in this case, as maps from x and x to y correspond bijectively to mac maps from hom x to hom y, i.e., since hom x and hom y are our functors, this is equivalently a bijection um, to natural transformations from um, hom x to hom y. But let's write this a little more suggestively. Hom x y is just hom y applied to x. The incredible result that is the Yonita lemma says that, in fact, this is this not only holds for hom y applied to x, but for any functor f applied to x. That is, f of x is truly isomorphic to the set of natural transformations from the representation of x to f, i.e. from hom x to f. This means, for example, that the set of natural transformations from hom x to f which is really abstract and not immediately clear, is can just be determined by looking at f of x. But that's the Yonita dilemma at first blush. What's really remarkable is what this tells us philosophically, that an object living in a category is entirely determined by its relationship to other objects in that category. In fact, this philosophy runs much deeper than you might first expect, Recently in my study of stable homotopy theory, I've been utilizing what is called the enriched Yoni dilemma. 
It's the same philosophy, but upgraded in a sense. The idea of enriched category theory is that the maps between objects in an enriched category are not only sets, but elements of some nice category themselves. A category can be, but not necessarily be, enriched over itself. The idea is just that the category you are enriching over has nice properties. The prototypical example is that of pointed compactly generated topological spaces, which is an enriched category over itself. In algebraic topology, we have, for example, the notion of a path space. As a set, it is the set of maps from the interval to x, but it's a very useful fact from topology that this is itself a topological space. I'm rambling on, but the amazing thing, um, but the amazing thing that is the unit of philosophy remains in this case, um, in this crazy situation, which is to say the set of enriched natural transformations from hom x to f is isomorphic as an object, e.g., a topological space to f of x. It's the same amazing idea that we can understand an object by understanding its relationship to other objects in the category, whether that set of relationships be a set or a topological space or whatever.